there there are moments where I'm making the music and I just have this feeling of like I definitely connected with whatever is feels true at that in that moment and that's the mo that's all I care about that's like the thing I live for and maybe that song will never even be shared but I just had that moment in that one day or time or and um, it's just amazing I just that's that's it for me that's why I keep doing it welcome to season two of making conversation with me Grant Bryden I've been sitting down with some of my favorite artists and thinkers to discuss creativity and life for this fortnightly podcast. For this episode, I spoke to Eliza, the North London musician behind A Sky Without Stars, an immersive slow burn and soul album that she wrote during the pandemic and shared with us earlier this year. Eliza recently joined me at Levi's House of Strauss in London to talk about music as a vessel for human connection, the paradox of creativity and commerce, and how she's finding ways to reconnect with nature. If you enjoy this episode, then please subscribe on your preferred podcast provider, and please check out my book, Life Lessons from Hip Hop, which is available now from all good booksellers. I love talking about ideas about changing things for the better and Mm. conversations that maybe inspire that sort of change can be really powerful so it's always what i'm up for having if you are yeah yeah yeah, for sure yeah and i mean it sounds like that sort of was a theme of this record as well right yeah definitely um i think it's a theme that's within me all the time and that i'm always trying to put into music that i'm making um obviously sometimes you just want to make a song that's just completely mindless and fun but a lot of most of the time I want to make something that is feels urgent and and um needed at least for me and my own sort of um soul's questions and yeah Hmm. (laughs) so in a way maybe you're trying to answer a question with a song perhaps or yeah probably trying to understand my observations and things that I'm seeing in the world Hmm. yeah so do you normally turn up to the studio and you've kind of got things that you want to talk about or how does that kind of urgency or those topics like how do they make their way into the music I guess yeah usually it's something that I've seen happen or something that's going on in my own life and it's always very personal to what either what I'm feeling about something that's happening in the world or what I, I'm sort of feeling about something that's happening in my own relationships. I think they reflect each other a lot as well. Right. Yeah. In what way? <laughs> well, I think that often what's happening in pe- my personal relationships is very like aligned with what might be happening in the rest of the world. It's all to do with, I guess, resistance and acceptance and all sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Perfect. I I really like sort of that idea of straight talker and like you know communication being so important, and yet we're always kind of like, or I'm often finding that like it's quite hard sometimes to like just say what you actually think or say how you feel. Yeah, definitely. I'm I'm I have some relationships where I find it really hard because I I'm worried it will create more drama or you know with certain personalities that um in friendships or other relationships it's you you tend to sort of beat around the bush because you don't want (laughs) any conflict but as yeah like you said as I've got older I've tried to be a bit more honest and be a bit more yeah straightforward and and straight up about some of the things that I want to say rather than hiding it because I think that can be confusing as well for somebody if you're saying one thing but feeling another thing so actually it's not beneficial for anyone Mm. to to do that yeah Yeah. because I think ultimately it the truth finds its way out whether it's like you've said it or whether it's just a weird feeling or something yeah 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 do you, what so what was the process of like writing that song like did had something happen to spark that or like 
Yeah, I think for me it was a, a relationship I had that I just felt like I was um, never able to speak honestly. Like, it was my mistake to be like that because I think it could have been... Um, things could have been different if I'd have always just been really honest, quite calmly. But I think because relationships aren't as simple as that, you just, they're all entangled with emotions and and um, especially if they're really, you know, long friendships or whatever it is, there's so much history and fear and all sorts of things entangled up in in these things. And I think if I'd have just been really straight up the whole time, it might have benefited the relationship but yeah mm. <laughs> and so i guess you found that like power to be like communicate directly where where do you think that that came from or how did you have that realization um i think in a semi explosion right <laughs> which isn't obviously like the healthiest way cuz and that's my way a lot of the time i think with a lot of my relationships i'm quite I kind of suppress how I really feel and then it explodes because I don't really love confrontation. I'd rather just like avoid, avoid, avoid. Mm. But I'm really like figuring out that actually it's better to just be honest in little bursts and then you never have the explosion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of that thing where to avoid conflict, you're not being direct and then eventually it just all kind yeah. of builds up and explodes at once it does for me anyway yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 and so th was that something where like you arrived at the studio and that had happened or that was <clears throat> or was it during the process like a, what was that sort of studio session like of putting that down as a song yeah I think with that song in particular it was a feeling and a and a the music came first and the melodies and stuff came first and it's sort of a mood and I, and sometimes I let the words subconsciously come out, out um, as I'm sort of freestyling the melody and I'll follow where they go and then I'll sort of end up in a feeling or in a thought that I kind of had for a long time. It's always quite like sort of soul searching experience for me like with writing in general it's very like subconscious at first and then i follow the trail of the words that seem to be coming out and see mm. what they mean kind of see what they mean to me at the time and usually i find things that i didn't even expect to find yeah yeah so it sounds quite a vulnerable sort of state to be in yeah i guess so yeah yeah <laughs> that's why i work with finn because me and him we just talk and talk and we're very open with each other and it's such a it's a very comfortable environment um that we've created with each other and we're able to just go quite deep together yeah mm. do you ever find listening back to something later that you're like this can't go out it's too sometimes um <laughs> but i try to be brave about that and just yeah make just share it mm do you think that there's like almost a a pressure with putting out something like straight talk or about being direct in communication and now do you feel like you have to sort of own that a bit i guess it's always a lesson to come back to obviously you got you know no one's perfect yeah. and you're always going to make the same pattern mistakes and it's about just checking yourself isn't it and hoping that you get better yeah mm. so almost like the you that's on some of these records is like a aspirational version of yourself, like what you want to be, what you're trying to be, I guess. I actually think that's what all my music is, is more aspirational and more trying trying to to find the truth in, in certain things and actually live that truth, um, which is obviously easier sung <laughs> than done. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and yeah, I guess like it's it is about sort of teaching myself as I go about the things that are important to me. Yeah. Mm. So I guess it's like you can't necessarily be held to that day to day, but that's where you kind of like want to be when you're the best yeah. version of you. Yeah. Almost. For sure. Yeah. Mm. Something that I was interested in is that you're bringing more movement and dance and stuff in into it, and I sort of since lockdowns and stuff like that a lot of 
a lot of art in general is there's more movement there's more dance in it i wondered if you felt like that was something that inspired that at all or i've always loved dancing i used to do dance when i was a kid and um i've always wanted to incorporate it in what i do um on the last album on a real romantic i did a little bit like here mm. and there like in a little bit in the shows and with this record i just i wanted i don't know what made me think about doing it for the first video for straight talker I'm trying to remember in the lockdown i started doing dancing with my friends nat zangi and kane i did it more just to like get my confidence to a good place because I wasn't feeling very confident at the like during lockdown time I just sort of lost a bit of confidence and I just knew that dance is so good for that it sort of opens your body up in a proud way and it helps your li literally like the muscles remember how to be mm -hmm. loud and proud basically yeah. and um I don't know why just something told me I've I've been sort of telling myself do dancing do dancing get back into dancing for like years and you know sometimes you just put something off and I just thought I'm going to do it now. Yeah. Um I guess it's one of those lockdown things. And um yeah and I just found it I just was having so much fun with it that I wanted to do something with the videos and and um it felt like just quite a natural pro progression. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I guess it's like, it feels like we spend so much time like in our heads and like in this space that it's good to also spend some time like in the body and doing something mm. physical. And yeah, I think it makes such a big difference. Yeah. 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 Listening to the record, it feels like quite a confident record, even to me in the way that it's mixed and that you leave a lot of space. Like you're not, it feels like you don't have to be up in the front of the mix all of the time filling up all of the the sort of three minutes whatever of the song you know there's a lot of space in the record and i feel like that must come with a s certain level of confidence i wondered sort of like how how you kind of came to that with the record like the space and like leaving that space mm. and stuff i think because i started off in the music world doing pop music and that was all very like forward vocals and quite shiny a lot of um top end put into like everything basically and i think that my favorite music and the music that i grew up listening to never really had that and i was you know i guess i was still learning when i was doing the pop thing so i didn't really know how to make those sounds appear and i think just as i've got more and more into making music and into the details of it I just want m music to sound really soothing and warm and just whatever sounds good in my ear. I mm. try and follow that basically. I think the vocals to me they're part of of the music. They're they're almost like an instrument that's playing along with the other instruments and to have them super far forward in the mix just doesn't make sense to me. It feels like that's just taking away too much from the rest of the music and the rest of the music is really important to me as well. Mm. There's like an egolessness to it. I felt like it, even the fact that, you know, the front cover, you're not like, you're not even on the front cover. And I guess like, that's the thing that sort of really struck me as like, you're not necessarily trying to make it all about you. I think it feels like something that actually people can really immerse themselves in and sort of like take what they want. Mm. I from like it. that. That's, that's, that's really cool because I think that my favorite music is definitely interpreted in my like when I hear it I'm I'm sure I'm interpreting it in my own weird way and and I'm sure if I spoke to the artists that I love a lot about it I'm sure it would be completely different to what I've taken from it and how I've related to it and in a way it makes me afraid to ha ever be in a position to be able to talk to some of those artists and find out what they're like or what the music means to them because it means so much to me in my own weird way and I love the idea of that being the case with with my music for other people and it not being too spelled out or too kind of I guess obvious or yeah. like I quite like abstract I like abstract art I like abstract music because I think that it's so fun to find meaning within it rather than sort of just I don't know, yeah. B2, just straight up, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Has it ever been difficult to 
have that process of kind of like you put the music out and then it's kind of not yours anymore it's like you put it out and i can listen to it and interpret it to be about something completely different to what you arrived at the studio that day with is has that ever been tough to sort of manage for you not really actually i kind of find it really healthy to let it go and i don't ever listen to my music after it's released apart from maybe to rehearse for a show or something like that but i just let it go it's not mine anymore it's just out there and i move on to the next thing yeah mm. what does that feel like then because i guess with the latest record it's like you had it for a little while and then what does it feel like to actually put it out it did to be honest with you actually because it came out about a month ago um or a bit more than that now i actually did have a bit of a crash after it came out because mainly because of with this with this record i was it was ready for a while and I was doing the videos and finding the right label partner and things like that. That whole whole process took a lot longer than I had expected it to. Um, I don't know whether it was cause of COVID or what, but it just felt like everything was moving a lot slower. So I had this finished record a lot for a lot longer than I would normally want that, want to have it. And I think when I sh finally shared it, it was like all the roads were leading to that one release day in my whole life like everything was like all about that and then once I shared it I was like oh what's my purpose now <laughs> I sort right. of felt a bit empty for a while I'm just starting to get back to normal <laughs> now yeah. but but um but yeah I think it's going to take maybe a minute to just get onto a new in, into a new direction I don't know what, what it will be but yeah 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 so I guess it's because you've sort of thought so much about that day putting that record yeah. out that you haven't really considered like what is beyond that <laughs> yeah. point I mean I guess a, aside from probably like touring in February and stuff like that yeah obviously I'll focus on the live show and st and that but um yeah I think like I'm in an ideal world, world I'd be writing more music and like getting on with that sure. but actually I kind of just need to just live my life for a bit and see what like I don't have much motivation right now mm. to get in the studio and write I just want to like go and like walk in a forest or something do you know yeah, what yeah, i mean yeah, yeah. just like get back to like the core of like existence yeah. <laughs> a little bit yeah, yeah yeah fans don't really think about like that period of like because i guess for them this is their first experience with this record has mm. been like the past month or so so they've mm -hmm. probably been listening to it quite a lot you've probably been quite present for them whereas the reality for you is like this like emptiness like what is that <laughs> what is that what is it like to sort of be in that position and like how have you found your way sort of back towards normality um i think it's still re been really beautiful to feel the reflection of the music in other people and actually having it shared is it's been amazing and i'm i'm loved connecting with people obviously that's the best thing about social media like hearing happy the music's feeling for people is so beautiful maybe that has helped me sort of like not feel too like lost in it um and you know reminds me that this is what partly why I do what I'm doing and to connect with people and and it makes you feel like you're not alone in your thoughts which is I guess acceptance of your community of the people who are listening to it is is like what we're all after in life I think mm. naturally just as human beings and so that's been really amazing but yeah mainly I've just been resting quite a lot like and just not going very fast and obviously coming and talking to you today and doing things to get the word out there about the music but apart from doing those things I've been quite calm and just sort of taking some time and going for walks and I've had like the week after the album came out I literally had a day where I literally couldn't get off the sofa I was just like heavy and just needed right. to just do that and let and I did let myself do that a bit yeah. <laughs> is that something yeah. you've had to learn to to do though like over the releases you put out um I don't remember what the last one wasn't as like there wasn't as much leading up to it okay. so I didn't didn't sure. feel this feeling as much then and I felt I was I was probably in my most like I don't know like my most flowy time with that last record I don't know why I just was really in a good rhythm so I don't f 
and I and I obviously we you you look back on your life sometimes and you're like oh that was a really good vibe like I really enjoyed myself then and I feel like we're always trying to understand why it why was I enjoying myself then and how can I get back to that I don't know if you feel the same way yeah yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> but like I just think you're never going to get back to where you were then and you're always going to have more knowledge in your brain that just it will never get you back to that place it's just but i'm sure you'll get back to you'll get to a new place that's like just as exciting yeah and it's just a roller coaster ride isn't it yeah so it's kind of like accepting i guess isn't it that you're not gonna have the exact same experience you had with the last record yeah it's always gonna be different i guess yeah and and also like accepting that yes you're feeling a bit low or whatever now but you're you're gonna it's gonna pass it's always going to pass. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess a record like this is not something that has to sort of go crazy in the first week and then we're never going to hear from it again. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's like a long... Yeah. Because uh, I, I guess, like, people are probably still finding the last record now and stuff. Yeah. And, and I think that's what I realised with the last record, especially from going from being part of the pop industry and everything has to be like in the charts and like it's all so like there's so much weird pressures and so much expectancy from artists it's just doesn't it doesn't it doesn't go well with art really that whole environment or with like a freedom to create in a way that's not pressurized and the difference between that and then releasing a real romantic where everything nothing was overnight it was all very slow but beautiful and 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 very connected and and i think that's made me realize it's definitely how i want to be i don't want to feel like any sort of sense of competition or mm. i just want to make music and and share it and try and be quite chill about what happens with it it's not really in my hands it's just i'm just here to make it and share it mm. Mm. did any of that like pop sort of competitiveness <clears throat> stay with you though was there any times during the last record release where you felt like oh any pressure or like no not at all and that's why why i had a real i almost like a sort of feeling of like um it's kind of like an epiphany or something especially i wrote alone and unafraid that song from the last album about this feeling right. just because i realized that none of it matters and it's just all it's just ridiculous and and um and it's not where my happiness stems from at all and i've just tried to hold on to that as mm. much as I can obviously you do get times where you think oh it would be cool to do that or cool to do this and you see other artists doing certain things and you think that would be great to do like in your that's where maybe a bit of that energy comes with comparison but um but yeah i try not to let it take over at mm. all yeah i guess it can be hard sometimes to you know like we can be a fan of something but that's not necessarily right for us to do but sometimes yeah. it can be hard to figure that out exactly yeah yeah and you can put it out into uh, people say you put things out into the universe and sometimes it will give you something it might be the thing you asked for but it might be something that's actually better for you yeah that's kind of not what you were expecting but you've got to just try and follow as these things come you just got to try and follow where they where they lead you really yeah, yeah. it makes us think sort of, <laughs> of the thing you said before about like if you got the opportunity to ask some of the artists that really inspired you like what made the song yeah they might give you a completely different answer and then that could actually be worse for you than yeah, maybe, or not. maybe it would be better. Maybe it'd yeah. be amazing. Who knows? But, but it would yeah. be different, essentially. Is yeah. what I guess uh, it makes us think of. Mm. Yeah. You mentioned like that kind of competitiveness as as not being where happiness stems from for you. So where do you think that that happiness does come from? What What is it that you're trying to? There, there are moments where I'm making the music and. I just have this feeling of like I definitely connected with whatever is feels true at that in that moment and that's the mo that's all I care about that's like the thing I live for and maybe that song will never even be shared but I just had that moment in that one day or time or and um 
it's just amazing i just that's that's it for me yeah <laughs> that's why i keep doing it <laughs> yeah yeah so i guess it's when you create something that matches how you feel basically that experience. yeah 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 and then i guess what then motivates you to then go a step further and share stuff or make an album even yeah usually if that feeling has occurred it is because it's going to be shared because i can tell that there's something that that's a, that at least i'm connecting with with it and hopefully it will make pe other people feel that feeling because that feeling is so good it's it's worth sharing i guess mm. yeah yeah so it's kind of the hope that that will pass on to the listener or that i guess they will get something yeah similar to yeah it. yeah there was a time where i was like no I'm, i think i'm making music completely selfishly <laughs> and i'm just trying to have those emotions and feelings for myself but I know that that's not true. Otherwise, why would I spend so much time on how to share it and how to put those feelings across and how to even elevate it with a video and how to, you know, I obviously do care and want to share and want it to potentially affect people in the same way it has affected me for, you know, in a, in a good way, hopefully. So, yeah, it's interesting, like, the question of whether it is just for myself or whether it, I am trying to share it with, with others and, and be audienced and sort of, I don't know what exactly why all these things, why, you know, why I have certain urges, but you just go along with it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I wondered sort of now that you've sort of removed that like competitiveness or the pop industry away from it, what becomes the the aim of putting out a record or like what what does, what is success in putting out a record now to you? I don't even know, to be honest. I think it is just, I don't know why, but my brain just goes straight back to the studio and just to that moment where you do have that connection with the thing you're making. And it's it's not, it, it does feel like it's not you that's making it. You're just part of an, the experience. And it's um, definitely why I do it. I think that's the sec that's where the success lies for me. Mm. Um, and everything else is kind of just, I don't really know. I just go along with it. Yeah. <laughs> it makes me question, should I just be a studio artist? Right. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but so it sort of passes through you and then you feel sort of obliged maybe to share it or like. Yeah. But to be fair, like that feeling does get, um, it gets almost magnified when you do perform on stage and you do almost share that feeling but just with like loads of people in the room it's almost like you're bringing everyone into the studio with you so maybe it is about magnifying that feeling as much as as you can and maybe that is why why there's the urge to to have as many people hear it as possible yeah. um which I guess then creates that that can create a, an I like a sense of competition because you're sort of competing for attention and ears and I try not to see it like that. I'm more of a but I can see why it gets to that yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's more about almost inclusion, really. From your you just want as many people to like experience this as possible. Yeah. But I guess what you're saying is it can easily become. A competition for attention and trying to yeah, yeah. almost like a force a yeah. forcefulness which i really don't accept yeah yeah how do you think that you find that balance you know like find that spot where it's like you're getting as many people in as you can but you're not tipping over to just being mm. kind of this competitive sort of mm. um, I think it's case by case, like just as things come your way, you have to decide whether they feel right to you or not. Yeah. And it is hard, like in an industry where people are getting on board with your project and they're trying to, maybe they do come from a for more forceful environment or they're coming from a more forceful environment or they lose their job if they don't get this or that or see certain numbers and things like that. So it's about navigating through 
I guess a system that does is in it's in every in, it's in so many industries this that system of like needing to reach certain goals and and survive it's a survival thing isn't it so it's about navigating through that that and not and not and trying not to succumb to to mm. yeah because i guess it's like you said before it's not really conducive to art is it it's not really like it doesn't that system doesn't really fit with creativity or it doesn't particularly like um motivate or yeah creativity yeah but we all have like a little need to like earn money and like survive and like pay the mortgage pay the bills so like there's this we're all part of this system that's for some reason is just completely i don't know it's obviously a massive thing to overturn but it would be cool if we could (laughs) Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How have you kind of reckoned with, because I guess like particularly with the album before this, that was you kind of like figuring out a better balance that works better for you than mm. the industry that you were sort of previously like immersed in. How do you think that you kind of struck that balance for that record? I almost don't think I did. I just did not engage with the industry at all for that album, for a Real Romantic. I just completely went the other way and I needed to I think I needed to just completely disconnect from the mainstream industry I did a lot of like radio shows on smaller stations and interviews with mates and just you know I mean it was very much like connecting with just people that just so happened to be in my world and then I did the odd thing that was maybe seen as more mainstream but it didn't feel it felt natural and it came about naturally it wasn't like I was part of this big machine like I had been before and I think now it's like with this album it's about finding a bit more of a balance between the complete opposite and you know of the the industry and the Mm. kind of I guess more left I guess or like more subculture-y side of music because I do want to be loud and proud and I have no feeling of needing to be quiet anymore. Like I think I needed to be a bit quiet with Real Romantic because I was so traumatized by the like forceful nature of the industry before and how like pushy it all is and how attention seeking and yeah. Mm. So that's uncomfortable to you to like be trying to push yourself to the forefront and stuff i guess in that way yeah i think so yeah 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 Yeah. and so the last album it sounds like you kind of almost needed it to be like this secret that just some people (laughs) know about yeah exactly like i needed to feel like no pressure about it and just to share music like really gently and i was i was kind of finding my way and finding my connection to music and and was sharing it like song by song as I felt excited about a song I would just share it and then I shared like five five songs and then make just added a few more and called it an album and it did Mm. feel like an album it felt very like part of one experience or like a certain amount of time but yeah it was very I was just sort of feeling my way in the dark a bit which was fun it was it was so good to be lost in it like that I mean I know you laughed when you said it but you mentioned the trauma of the previous experience so was it ever difficult last time around putting this music out for yourself do you know what it wasn't because it I think it was I had like quite a big shift like it was almost like I had to go through all that sort of madness with the pop industry to know that it's like really isn't what I want and to like really like shift my whole purpose and I think in a way it's like I'm grateful for it now because it really woke me up to what is important to me and what to my authentic self I guess yeah. whereas if I had a, if I'd have just sort of bumbled along in it and it had all gone kind of okay or whatever maybe I would still be there in a not very connected position and by connected I mean like to music and to yeah. that sort of thing yeah and then I guess like the communication stuff we were talking about you would explode yeah I think that is basically <laughs> what happened <laughs> I just had a an explosion of like realization and I'm really grateful for it because yeah I feel 
and and I'm grateful to have been part of the industry before and you know obviously there were good moments in it and I learned a lot I it's where I learned how to write songs um and it wasn't all bad it was really interesting and it was really I learned my craft for sure in that time but um I I feel grateful that I was part of a system that is so imprinted all over our society to be able to understand it and to be able to look at it for what it what it is yeah so that you know we can talk about like how we can change it and how we mm. can maybe make it a lot better for people and yeah what do you think are the main like big changes that need to happen then in that industry from your position as someone who's like being able to get into it understand it and is now out of it what mm. do you think are the like core things that need to be there's so many things yeah. i've there's some that is a really massive question and i'm sure i have many things i could say about it i think one of the main things is what i touched on earlier is like uh, there's a forcefulness to it um and um, there's a lot of manipulation but i wouldn't blame a single person for that i think it's to do with the environments that everyone is in you know everyone's fearful to lose their job especially at the time I was there it was all when the internet just started taking over so no one really knew what to do and how to make money in that world with people just ripping stuff off the internet so for me it was about when I look at the the individual things and individual people I don't really see anything wrong like with them as people they're all lovely people really but like I think they were all part of a system that really didn't like bring out the best <laughs> in them. Mm. Um, and in a way it's like, like obviously p artists are used in that system all the time and they're not encouraged to explore and, and, and go into themselves as artists they're just kind of encouraged to just make hits and make money and it's all money's the priority right yeah. so from not just a music perspective but just in any sort of perspective of just i guess you could say spirituality i know that word's always like used a lot but like just any connection to anything creative really is is kind of it's su it's suppressed basically in yeah. in those environments and in any industry environment i yeah. would say so yeah i guess encouraging creativity as maybe our pri a priority in every human would be amazing yeah to do be able to do that would be really cool <laughs> yeah no because i guess like as you say it's it is a systemic problem and i guess everyone i've met at a major label is like creative and into into music and yeah but it's not really set up like that is it it's yeah. ultimately like about investment and about like an asset and you you end up being the asset um, yeah and people are just being used all over the place yeah. right and the same as any other industry um and my, if money's put first then creativity second and it's the same with everything else every other industry is like that it should be the other way around mm -hmm. i don't even think there obviously I have all these ideals in my head that when I sometimes when I say things I think I sound kind of hippy dippy or like maybe utopian because I kind of have like an idea of what I f how I can how things could be and I'm sort of use it as a as a as guidance to like map out how to get there right. sort of thing but obviously I know that there's so many broken things and people have priorities for a reason like making money is a really important priority in this world so it's not like i can see that happening tomorrow if that makes yeah, sense but exactly. like i do think that we have got our priorities wrong in our society yeah mm. you mentioned that this record you're finding more of a balance right and right i wondered what the things are between the last record and this one that you've implemented that you feel like are bringing you closer to a balance but without you know Forcing, you're obviously not yeah get into that place where it's forceful but it's not it no longer has to be this quiet yeah yeah i think like one of the things that i've realized is that i i don't enjoy it very much but i do feel a need to 
connect with people and I think it is just about being available basically to whatever comes up comes my way and just making sure I'm available and open to connecting with people like I'm here with you yeah. I'm not not enjoying this no, no, but no, like yeah. you know what I mean like but yeah like but it wouldn't then, come naturally to you maybe. yeah it wouldn't be something I'm like put on the agenda to like go and have loads of conversations or like to even because I'm quite usually I feel quite comfortable today but I'm quite nervous talking usually right um and and also sometimes even performing and I want so much to for it to be to be good that sometimes I can get quite nervous about that as well and I think it's just about realizing that I obviously have an urge to connect with people and to connect with my community, whether it's like literally sm small amount of group of friends or whether it's like a global community or whatever it may be. I'm o I'm open to it and I'm here to connect. And sometimes it's quite tough to to be open to that all the time, but it's something that I've realized that is part of my experience basically yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so you're trying to do that more with this record yeah yeah and not be so sort of hidden away and sort of basically cowardly <laughs> right in my in my eyes it is a bit i, I want to have more courage basically to okay to yeah yeah, yeah. get out there more because yeah. i guess what's your natural like if you woke up this morning and there was nothing on the agenda what what would you want to do I think I would like have a slow morning. <laughs> I would get, I would maybe go and like sit in my garden and like connect with my, my garden a little bit and then go to the studio and just make some music Yeah. and then come home, maybe see, see a friend or like, you know, hang out with my boyfriend. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or, and then on the weekend I'd be more social as well. But yeah, that's like my perfect yeah. idea of, of life <laughs> yeah so it's smaller and it's keeping things like yeah not it's not like oh, i would love to get up and do like a headline show somewhere no that's like obviously when i actually get on stage i do love it and i and i enjoy that connection so much i mean it is the most thrilling and it's it makes you feel high it's like literally the highest feeling that i've ever experienced and maybe there is a bit of a, an addiction to that feeling as well and that's why I keep doing what I'm doing but but the lead up to that is so <laughs> nerve-wracking I find it really nerve-wracking yeah yeah is that a thing that it comes up quite a lot I feel where it's like the relationship between like excitement and anxiety is like really close mm -hmm. and so it's like that yeah push and pull between the two I guess yeah so it's like yeah I think it's about trying to relax and just enjoy it and not taking it so seriously and yeah just being happy with what you have to give mm. and not like I feel a sense of like I need to push myself all the time I don't know whether that's my upbringing like I probably is but <laughs> yeah. yeah I think we all have been brought up with a sense of like we're, we're being expected to do certain things with our lives yeah I mean, it's a conditional love that we've sort of all grown up with. You've got to be a certain way. You've got to have a certain job. You've got to earn a certain amount of money. You've got to be respectable, polite, and all these different things. And obviously, like, politeness is nice. But, like, I think we've all been brought up with, yeah, a lot of expectations on yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that politeness goes back to the, like, communication stuff, isn't mm, it? It's like mm. constantly being polite is what means that you aren't, saying how you yeah. feel isn't it gotta be a bit rude sometimes <laughs> <laughs> i wanted to mention the because you mentioned the garden um and how it, your ideal thing would be to sit in the garden i know it's like nature really like comes in a lot on this record and mm. it's there visually and what is what is it about the garden and nature and stuff um for you well i grew up in london so i feel like I never thought I'd say I want to leave because I'm, I'm such a home girl, but I'm craving nature so much now. And it's been many years that I've been in a concrete world and I'm kind of done with it. I don't think I'll ever be able to leave because I do love the culture here and I love my fr friends and family, but I do want to make it wilder here. I do want to sort of be a part of that change, making it 
a lot wilder and it's supposed to be quite a green city london i he heard that it's like one of the greener cities but i yeah. still don't think it's green enough right. and i think the noise and the sound of the tooting horns and, w and one of the reasons i called the album the sky without stars is because we don't get to see the stars in the city and it's just kind of an insanity i think what we, we're doing to ourselves so it'd be cool to sort of see those things change i know that like on my own those things aren't going to change but i'm just trying to like be a part of the conversation and put it in the music and try and make an environment that's really beautiful for people living in the city mm. Mm. yeah because mm. i saw something you said about the, i can't remember the exact word you used but essentially the harm that it might be doing to us that we can't see yeah. that. i wondered yeah. making the record and sort of exploring those things what do you think that that thing of like we can't see the sky properly what do you think that that does to us yeah yeah it, i mean i'm sure it i'm sure it's affecting us majorly because when you go out and see the stars if you go to the countryside or like we went to italy and we saw the sky like in the countryside there and it was in august i think it's when you've got shooting stars and things like that and i just couldn't believe it i couldn't believe how like awesome yeah. it was and to the fact that we just completely don't even talk about, <laughs> I mean, I'm, we're talking about it now, but I barely had this conversation my whole life mm. about how we've chosen to just fill our cities up with a very poor imitation of the stars, like with yeah. electricity everywhere. Yeah. It's like we we know we want them, because and we're, cause we're so scared of the dark, we're so scared of death. I think that's like ma the main sort of root of it. Mm. So we fill up the city with loads of lights so that we're never in the dark. But actually the dark is good for us. And actually we'll be able to see the light of the, s of the stars if we were in the dark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So There's always a light. Anymore, There's always yeah. a light. Yeah. There's never a complete dark, pitch darkness. Yeah. Maybe because of, England is like one of the leading countries of like the industrial revolution and I guess electricity go being everywhere. And maybe it's because we've always had cloudy skies. Mm. Maybe the cloudy skies have obstructed us from the stars. So we've been so afraid that we've created our own shitty version of the stars, basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's interesting because it makes us think about like, I was reading some stuff about how looking at the stars allows you to like get a grasp of your like oneness with the universe and feel mm, a part of mm. that bigger thing. And then I suppose by like essentially locking that off so we can't see it. Yeah. It makes us sort of just part of this concrete. Individualist yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely messing up, messing us up for sure. And you know, you hear about like indigenous people all over the world and their culture is so connected to nature and it's just been completely blasted just blasted away basically by by our western culture mm. which isn't really is can you even call it culture <laughs> it's like i guess we try and make turn like try and pull stuff out of it but compared to like the connection you get from looking at the stars or from looking at a flower we're not really doing very well, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you how do you find ways living in the city? How do you personally find ways then to connect? Like as you mm. mentioned, your garden and stuff. What are your tips for people to connect? To yeah, nature? I always go to the park, like the wild parks, like Hampstead Heath, because I'm not in North London, so Hampstead Heath's my favorite park. It's like just really you can go off the path and you can find yourself just amongst like almost like a jungle like makes you realize how exotic our country is when you actually look at the forests here it's so they're so beautiful and you can hear the sounds of the birds it, in summer it feels like you're I don't know I sometimes think I'm in the Amazon or something it just is so beautiful and I think we've just made it so concrete in our cities that we have this feeling like that does, can't belong here that feeling of wildness and yeah so going out to to Hampstead or to um like out of London Epping Forest just anywhere I can really in any chance I have basically yeah, yeah. perfect so sort of to start 
wrapping up, I wondered what what's been the most difficult thing that you've had to overcome during the period of sort of putting out this record. What do you think's been the biggest obstacle you've had, and how how do you think you've managed to overcome it? I think like in making the record, there was a lot of self reflection. I think it was during lockdown most of the record was made, so it was very like looking at myself looking at what I need to change and I'm sure a lot of people did that sort of reflection at that time I think the slowing down of the world the sort of the going deeper with like social issues that slowing down and seeing things for what they really are and and um seeing where you've overlooked it certain things like I think that was all very like complex work that I'm sure a lot of us did and just trying to like basically do what I guess we're always trying to do is like unlock our minds and unlock like some of the things we've learned undone some of the things we've learned I guess growing up in a city you're always going to have certain things that are imprinted on you that just aren't really true for who you are um so yeah just like going through that whole process was probably quite difficult and I think a lot of people had a tough time at that time so I'm sure I'm not the only one saying this but it was just it was an interesting time <laughs> I'm sure other people had a lot worse times but it was very interesting to yeah. make, be making music and trying to actually understand and trying to sing true truthfully about what was going on and what we were, what we were all going through mm. at the time Sure. Mm. And what are you most proud of about what you've achieved so far with this um, record? I don't know. I just, I, I do really feel strongly about the songs. I feel, really do feel proud of them. I think that they are true to me anyway. I think that's all I can hope for, really. Yeah. yeah. And lastly, what does success look like to you in terms of like you as a human being? What is success? I think just constant connection with that truth thing that, or that true that true thing that I seem to want to keep coming back to and being able to co constantly keep connecting with music basically just music. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Making Conversation with Grant Bryden featuring Eliza. If you like this episode then please be sure to rate, comment and subscribe wherever you're listening to podcasts. You can listen to Eliza's A Sky Without Stars, available physically and on streaming services now, and catch her on tour early next year. And you can check out my book, Life Lessons from Hip Hop, which is available from all good booksellers now. Thank you to Levi's for welcoming us into House of Strauss to record, as well as Eroy Chan for the graphic design, and John Phonics for the instrumental that I'm talking over right now. You can connect with me on social media at Grant Bryden, and Eliza at Eliza Lovechild on all platforms. I'll be back in two weeks with another episode.